Lord Stanley held high, they returned to their homeland, an extraordinary journey. The Red Wings in Red Square, Box 2 in Russia. Good evening, I'm Hugh Perkins. An extraordinary journey indeed, a journey that not so long ago was unimaginable. But in mid-August, it became reality. Fox 2 reporter Bill Gallagher and videographer Alex Kornienko traveled to Russia to bring you this historic event through the eyes of our cameras. What they found was an ancient land in the infancy of democracy. A land whose people seemed genuinely happy at being freed from the shackles of communism, eager to embrace their former enemies. Tonight, a look at the striking similarities and stark contrasts between two nations and some insight on how a little boy's game played by grown men is drawing distant peoples together. With me now in the studio is Fox 2 reporter Bill Gallagher. Bill, your job has taken you many places over the years, but this was a labor of love, a chance to be a part of history. Huel, joining the Red Wings on this trip was a wonderful experience, something I'll always remember. It was a trip that had importance beyond the hockey world, and when the Red Wings brought the Stanley Cup to Red Square, it was a moment to treasure. When the Red Wings from Russia raised the Stanley Cup in Red Square, they chose a place rich in history and a place where events of great consequence are marked. Looking at the magnificent Cathedral of St. Basil, I was overwhelmed by the symbol of Russia's faith and tradition. The players knew bringing the symbol of hockey supremacy here in the shadows of the Kremlin walls underlined its importance. There's nothing uh, like, uh, like this, like uh, carry the cup in downtown Moscow, and especially in this place, uh, Red Square. For Mike Illich Jr., his family's team bringing the cup to Red Square was a moment of pure pride. How's it feel, Mike? Awesome. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Very light. <laughs> yeah, it is. Beautiful. What a feeling. Slava Fetisov introduced the Stanley Cup to Russia at the Moscow airport. The people reached out to touch the trophy and welcome the players. The Red Wings brought the cup to the Central Red Army Hockey School. They all played in this arena and they hope to inspire young hockey players. In Russia, the Red Wings are the team in the NHL. During the tour, the Red Wings visited the American Embassy and the diplomatic staff and their children got to see the highlights of the Red Wings championship season. Throughout the tour, fans from Michigan were delighted to see their Red Wings and the Stanley Cup. The trip to Russia was a double blessing for a couple from Brighton, Michigan. We're really excited to be here and adopt our little boy, and we can't believe the Red Wings are here, too. And I touched the Stanley Cup. I thought that was pretty exciting. The Red Wings bringing the Stanley Cup here to Red Square profoundly touched the Russian people. It is simply an unprecedented event that astonished those who witnessed it. I walked with Slava Kozlov as he explained his special duties with the Stanley Cup. Youngest player, youngest guy, that's why I need the cup all the time. Well, as you can see, the cup itself is round, short, 106 years old, but of course the holy grail of hockey. How do the Russian people react? How do they see this? Is it much more of a symbol than, than just a, a trophy? Well, of course, it's a North American trophy, but the Russian people became very familiar with it. They love hockey, and they understand the importance of it. And certainly the Red Wings, uh, with their trip there, made a lot of Russians who didn't realize the importance of the Stanley Cup. Now they understand it. You know, Huel, Moscow is a huge city with more than 10 million people, but Russia is a vast nation with countless small towns and cities. Two of the Stanley Cup champion Red Wings hail from a little city that's come to be known as Hockey Town, Russia. <laughs> There's no place like home for a triumphant display of the Stanley Cup. For Igor Larianov, home is Voskresensk. It's a small city about 70 miles east of Moscow. Rural and quaint, it's fertile ground for great hockey players. It's home, too, for Red Wing Slava Kozlov. And two other Stanley Cup winners grew up in Hockey Town, Russia. At the arena where these great players developed their skills, a huge crowd turned out to hail the hometown heroes. They got a traditional Russian welcome, bread and salt. It was a day of celebration as the players in the cup appeared. That's my hometown, and you see the people, they're so exciting. For Igor Larionov, it was a moment to treasure. He too fought the old Soviet system when he played for the Central Red Army team. Every time I, I'm coming home, I feel uh, 
goosebumps in my, in my uh, body. It was a festive occasion for the people of Vosquezensk. They danced in honor of their hockey heroes as the people grew an understanding of the importance of the Stanley Cup. I never dreamed about that, that my brother could win the Stanley Cup. So what is it about a little rural town like this that it can produce such remarkable hockey players? Well, there are a lot of reasons. Slava Kozlov humorously described for me the recipe for hockey wow, excellence in his hometown. We had great coaches, good hockey school, and uh, actually nothing to do except hockey over here. <laughs> I was invited to Kozlov's home and treated with warmth and kindness. Slava relishes home and family. His father showed me the backyard he used to flood in the winter where Slava learned to skate and the puck marks on the garage. The garage doesn't take too well to slap shots. <laughs> I can make a new one for you right now. The Russian players all have wealth and fame now, but in their hometown they possess things far more valuable. The love and respect of those who know them best and recognize what they did to reach the pinnacle of the hockey world. You look at the reaction in that small town, it is obviously much greater, much more enthusiastic there than it was in Moscow. What about uh, how you were treated there? Much like family, it seems. It really was. It was uh, an extraordinary experience to be there in such a small town that has produced such wonderful hockey players. And, and to see the faces of the people when the players came out there, and these are kids who grew up there, you know, kids that they saw as local hockey heroes who went on and uh, the championship of the NHL and to bring the cup there, the people were just delightful, they really were. Yeah, we think Detroit is hockey town, but you see there, that Russian city, it's a spiritual connection to hockey that uh, I have never seen before. No doubt, and they're so proud of these players. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, of course, uh, not all of the Russian five made the trip to their homeland. One of those missing, Vladimir Konstantinov. But during the journey, he was never far from the thoughts of his Russian fans and his touring teammates. Of course, we're going to have a lot of pictures uh, we're going to bring to Detroit to see Vlad and Sergei. And uh, we're going to uh, share some uh, good moments uh, with Vladimir and Sergei when we get back to Detroit. Larianov is, of course, talking about Vladimir Konstantinov, possibly the best defenseman in the NHL, and Sergei Minatsikonov, the Red Wings team masseur. Both were critically injured when the limousine they were riding in crashed into a tree on Woodward Avenue. While they're showing signs of improvement now, they remain hospitalized, undergoing rehabilitation at William Beaumont Hospital in Royal Oak. The accident occurred only days after the Red Wings hoisted the cup for the first time in 42 years, and it devastated their teammates. Alsava Fetisov was also injured in that accident, but as you have seen, it did not keep him from returning to the land that once labeled him a traitor. And Bill, uh, as for Sergei Fedorov, uh, there's some question about his status with the team, but some of his teammates were not happy that he did not accompany them on this trip. No doubt about that, Huel. There were a number of the Russian players who were a little miffed along the way. There was a, a uncertainty as to why he didn't make the trip, but certainly they thought that this was a patriotic duty to go there. Absolutely. Well, earlier this week, the Red Wings arrived in Traverse City for training camp. The fans, of course, delighted, enthusiastic. Well, now that some of the Russian Red Wings are back on American ice, they've had a chance to analyze the significance of their journey. And they spoke to Fox 2's Frank Malico. One month removed from their trip back home, back on ice and still in hot demand, but their memories of Russia are still as fresh as today. People in Russia, they do not smile a lot. As soon as they see the cup, they start smiling at something. Uh, Magic in this cup. The cup became a symbol of friendship, uniting two completely different countries. Slava and Igor delivered the message, and it made a lasting impression, especially on the children. You could see the children touching the cup, and I talked to a few of them, and they now just, you know, uh, have a dream. You know, finish the school, play hockey, and uh, try to bring the cup home to Russia. At Wings Camp, Mike Illich Jr. and the Russian Red Wings have been inseparable. Illich spent three weeks on the Russian tour, and he's still in complete awe. What I found uh, quite remarkable is how the politicians were nervous to meet Igor Larionov and uh, Slava Fetisov and Kazi, and uh, they really bestowed the honor on them that I thought would kind of go the other way. Sergei Fedorov did not make the trip back home to Russia. Instead, he opted to stay here in the States, a topic that's still a little tender with his Russian teammates. I never get invited by anybody, but I knew Cup go to Russia, and I felt this is my country, and uh, I got to be there. Were you surprised that he didn't go? Well, I can't really, like, speak for Sergei. You know, he has his own personal life, so, and uh, but 
chairman will tell you anything. The Russian trip was a goodwill tour in more ways than one, perhaps even more right here in the States. I brought the pictures of celebration of the Stanley Cup. Everybody was uh, uh, clearly understand what was going on. Frank Malakote, Fox 2 News. The Russian people themselves are also a major part of our story tonight. Forget your preconceived notions about the mother country. We will show you some of the dramatic changes we saw since the fall of communism. Plus, a special look at Slava Fetisov, a profile in courage. You're watching Red Wings in Red Square, Fox 2 in Russia. Dear Mr. Responsible, you want some advice? Don't take out the garbage. Take a month off. Be late. And yeah, get a new car. This is the Buick Riviera. You get a supercharged engine. It's longer than a Range Rover, but it's only got two big doors. You want a built-in baby seat? Get a car from Sweden. The Buick Riviera. You're due. Definitely due. Mom and Dad used to take us to McDonald's every Saturday. <laughs> we couldn't wait. So, hey, we figured it was time we treated them. And you couldn't pick a better time. Because right now at McDonald's, a juicy hamburger is just 49 cents. A cheeseburger is 59 cents. And a morning fresh sausage biscuit is 69 cents. But time's limited. So hurry to the original. McDonald's. And forget about the cost. Mom and Dad, we've got a cup. Three hot specials at McDonald's. This is the real deal. I'm Andy Jacob, president of Worldwide Financial. Announcing Worldwide's newest loan called 60 Days to Pay. Because if you get a loan before Monday night, you won't have to make your first payment for 60 days. Imagine, no payments for two months, plus Worldwide will loan you the money you need, even if your credit's bad. But you've got to hurry, because 60 Days to Pay ends Monday night. So call 1-800-807-YES. Worldwide Financial. Cash fast when you need it most. It's Chevy's year-end sale. Say yeah. The biggest values, the biggest savings around are at your Chevy dealers. Financing as low as 2.9% or cash backs up to $2,000. Yeah. Your Chevy dealer has the truck or car you're looking for. Selection is great. Two-night financing or cash back up to $2,000 means you'll get more, not pay more. Get more, not pay more. Shop Chevy. See your Chevy dealer today. Bill Perkins, Bill Gallagher back with you for our special on the Red Wings and Red Square. The truth is, without one man's courage, there might not be any Russians playing for the Red Wings. No trip to Red Square with the Stanley Cup. That's for sure, Huel. You know, we've gotten used to Russian hockey players making millions in the NHL and playing for Stanley Cup champions. But not so long ago, that was unthinkable and impossible. It took one man with courage and determination to change all that. <laughs> The leader of the historic Stanley Cup tour of Russia was Red Wing defenseman Slava Fetisov. Amid the glory, it was a time to remember the hardship he endured, the system he conquered, and how he forever changed the future for Russian hockey players. He was the first Russian to play in the National Hockey League. He opened up the world of hockey to the Russian players. They appreciate that. The guys who play now in the NHL, they, they always call him, and they always, if they had a chance to talk, after the game, they always say, like, Slava, thank you. You were the first one. Fetisov was once captain of the Central Red Army team. He and the other Russian Red Wings brought the cup to their old arena at the Army Hockey School. I remember the time when Slava wasn't allowed to escape here in 1989. And now he's very proud to take a Stanley Cup in his arena. When he played in Russia, Fetisov lived in an army barracks away from his family, and he was paid a meager salary. When Fetisov quit the Red Army and made plans to bolt to the NHL, he was labeled a traitor, and the Soviet authorities threatened to send him and his family to Siberia. He won two Olympic gold medals and seven world championships. His wife beamed while adjusting his medals, noting his courage and perseverance that makes her so proud. Yes, I am. Very much. 
It's not everything, believe me. I was with him as he walked proudly and reflected on his ordeal. Does this make it all worthwhile, what you went through? Yeah. Simple as that. <laughs> oh, yeah. I was stunned when he and the other Russian players made an extraordinary political statement. They walked the Stanley Cup across Red Square to Lenin's tomb. Did you ever think you'd see the Stanley Cup in front of Lenin's tomb? No, never. Never, never. Nobody can imagine that. But finally, it's here. <laughs> From outcast to international hero. Quite a, quite a moment. Absolutely. Well, with us right now is Alex Konyenko, a native of Moldavia, one of the republics of the old Soviet Union. Alex is the Fox 2 videographer who traveled to Russia with Bill. And Alex, this is not the same country you left. Absolutely. You know, I've heard from my relatives and friends, seen it, uh, on TV uh, about how Russia is changing now. But this trip was definitely a great opportunity for me to see it firsthand. I first visited Moscow while I was preparing to leave Russia five years ago. I was standing in the line at the American embassy just like these people. The city then looked great to me. Russia now is in great transition, and you can see it, especially in Moscow. It's beginning to glisten. New construction is everywhere you look. All buildings and churches are being restored. I was very impressed as I photographed the city. The present conditions in downtown are amazingly beautiful. Now the whole community is being rebuilt, and it's good the government is doing this. Moscow is celebrating its 850th anniversary, and the city is coming alive. It feels like a holiday. Many Russian women are just gorgeous, and they are becoming more and more stylish. The change to a free market economy is noticeable everywhere. More and more Western products are being used. While the young people adjust quickly to the changes, the older people can be left out, and they are the ones who suffer the most. Nightlife in Moscow is wild. The city with no nightclubs a few years ago now has more than 400. Like in the United States, alcohol abuse is a serious social problem, and drug use is on the rise. The crime rate is alarming, and the Russian mafia tries to control many segments of the economy. But the Russia I just visited is a much better society than it was before. I truly believe and hope that this time it will only get better for everybody. But the transition to democracy has not been easy. There was a time when many Russians saw America as the only land of opportunity. Is that still the case? Well, I would say Russia is, uh, in Russia, America is still quite a desirable country. Everybody knows that America is like a country of free. But uh, as like how you call Iron Curtain being raised up, and now Ar Russians see that, that not only America, every other country has different opportunities. And besides the fact that uh, some of the Russians still prefer to stay in Russia. With all these changes, there is also is a great opportunity, too. Absolutely. Alex, thank you so much for You're your welcome. great video and your comments tonight. My pleasure. You. you know, advertisements for American products are seemingly everywhere you look in Russia now. And Detroit is reaping rewards from the transition to a free market society. I'm Murray Feldman. From Detroit to Russia, the automobile industry grows. The story is coming up. Jeep Grand Cherokee Laredo, just $3.59 a month. See your Southeast Michigan Jeep dealer. Arbor brand products offer all the quality of the national brands at a fraction of the cost. And that makes everybody feel good because everybody likes to save money. And that's why the Arbor brand is the fastest growing brand in Michigan. Ah. Oh. Mom and Dad used to take us to McDonald's every Saturday. <laughs> we couldn't wait. So hey, we figured it was time we treated them. 
And you couldn't pick a better time. Because right now at McDonald's, a juicy hamburger is just 49 cents. A cheeseburger is 59 cents. And a morning fresh sausage biscuit is 69 cents. But time's limited. So hurry to the original. McDonald's. And forget about the cost. Mom and Dad, we've got a cup. Three hot specials at McDonald's. This is the real deal. Dear Mr. Responsible, you never missed the 712. You got a haircut every other Tuesday. You never left a wet bathing suit on the bed. And guess what, friend? You're done dotting eyes. This is the Buick Riviera. You get a supercharged engine, a CD player with six speakers, and an ashtray big enough for two cigars. It's not meant for carpooling, but then again, neither are you. The Buick Riviera. You're due. Definitely due. Country uh, that have any American product, I think. But now on each corner you see McDonald's and uh, fr American fruits. I saw some some, some from Florida, and uh, I think it's wonderful. Bill Perkins and Bill Gallagher back with you for our special look at the Red Wings in Red Square. American companies are racing to set up shop in Russia right now. They see a great potential with some 250 million consumers living in 11 time zones. And when they want to travel, they'd love to have their own car. Fox 2 Money reporter Murray Feldman examined the American auto industry's push into Russia. Alexander Lunyo, a Russian consumer, is choked with emotion. He's just taking delivery of the first Russian-made Chevy Blazer. I never dreamed of finding myself in an atmosphere of such a celebration and a great ceremony. The government has reason to celebrate. It's been encouraging American companies to open stores and sell products and build manufacturing plants in Russia to boost the nation's economy. And the Russian people are pleased. Quality is very good, you know, much better than Turkish products or uh, some products from China. So Russian people prefer good American products. And so Ford Tauruses now travel on Russian streets. Ford and other automakers are pressing into Russia for two reasons. They see opportunity because the land is rich in natural resources and because the people are rich in education. They're easy to train. You have 98% literacy in Russia. It's, um, in the, uh, during the communist regime, they, a lot of money went into education of people. It's only trying to bring it up to Western standards is, is the issue. At $17,000 and up, it's impossible for many Russians to afford new big three cars, which last month were shown off here at the Russian auto show. But as automakers do more manufacturing of parts and more assembly in Russia, costs should come down and income should go up. Our best-selling vehicle right now is the European Ford Escort with 1.3 liter and 1.6 liter engines. Russian automakers already produce about a million cars a year. Many, though, are unreliable, and so Russians welcome American. I like the American cars, such as Chrysler, Lincoln, and Cadillac. And American automakers like the Russian consumers, too. I'm money reporter Murray Feldman, Fox 2 News. Well, I have to ask you, you're in this country with a long tradition. Did you eat at McDonald's? <laughs> I, I actually did, which is a rarity for me. I have to tell you, it was the most crowded McDonald's I've ever been in. Enormous crowds there. <laughs> All right, Bill. Of course, uh, we hope you got your VCR ready. A special treat when the Red Wings in Red Square returns. It's Chevy's year-end sale. Say yes. The biggest values, the biggest savings around are at your Chevy dealer. Financing as low as 2.9% or cash back up to $2,000. The year end sale. Say yes. Cash in on a rugged S10 pickup for low 2.9 financing or $12.50 cash back. Or get big cash back savings on a huge selection of Cavaliers. Say yes to a great Chevy deal today. See your Chevy dealer today. Now, Wendy's five-piece chicken nuggets are just 99 cents every day. And seven orders of chicken nuggets. Oh, whoa, whoa. Only seven orders? Yeah, my mom's making a big dinner tonight. Bummer. Wendy's five-piece crispy chicken nuggets are all white meat that are crispy on the outside and juicy on the inside. And at just 99 cents, they make any meal more delicious. Now, this is the perfect meal. Get your hamburger, your french fries, drink, and nuggets. Four basic food groups. <laughs> I thought there were five. Wendy's chicken nuggets, just 99 cents every day. You have a telephone number, a credit card number, a fax number, a pager number, 
a checking account number. Isn't it about time you had a number for freedom? Jeep Cherokee. With rugged good looks, shift on the fly four-wheel drive and a four-liter engine, it's the number you've been looking for. Now lease Cherokee with these features at no extra charge. See your Southeast Michigan Jeep dealer. I'm Andy Jacob, president of Worldwide Financial, announcing Worldwide's newest loan called 60 Days to Pay. Because if you get a loan before Monday night, you won't have to make your first payment for 60 days. Imagine, no payments for two months, plus Worldwide will loan you the money you need, even if your credit's bad. But you've got to hurry, because 60 Days to Pay ends Monday night. So call 1-800-807-YES. Worldwide Financial, cash fast when you need it most. Well, we hope you've enjoyed our program this evening. If we've achieved our goal, you'll have a better understanding of the significance of the journey by the Russian Red Wings and of the people in that changing land. We we'll leave you now with a musical montage from our journey put together by Fox 2 editor extraordinaire Ken Quato. Enjoy. explains this passion 